has a new iPhone filmmaking kit called the Sherpa. It comes with an everyday carry style iPhone case that is MagSafe compatible, which is great. It also comes with this very nice handle that is multifunction. It works as a grip, it has a cold shoe, it has a Bluetooth remote, and it also turns into a selfie stick. This may be the best feature of the entire device because it's really well thought out. It comes in really handy. And then the first filter I'm trying here, and really this is what I would call the basic kit, is the variable ND filter. It comes with a lens cap, which is nice. It's very solid, well built, and it connects magnetically. And the connection is very solid. Of course, when you're talking about smartphones, a variable ND is super important because of motion blur. And here's a couple quick test shots, just showing traffic using the native camera app in cinematic mode. And we are getting some decent motion blur using the VND filter here, and it's at its full strength. ND is really the most important filter you can add to your phone when you're trying to get professional results. Next up, the CP filter, a polarizing filter. And polarizers are something that I don't use a lot, but they're great to have around when you need them. The main thing they do is help you reduce reflections, shooting into water. Or going through a windshield, shooting people in a car. And the other thing they can do is darken a sky. So not a necessity, but they are nice to have. Next up is a snow mist filter. And this one's interesting. It's not too heavy. It's designed really to take that digital edge off and soften skin in particular. So here is no filter. And now here is with it. And it really works as described. It does soften the image in a good way and blooms the highlights just ever so slightly. Now here's the same thing inside. And inside it doesn't seem to affect the image quite as much. There is a subtle difference. It is softer, but it's not nearly as noticeable as it is out in brighter sun. But nonetheless, it's a valuable filter to have in your kit. And now here is their cinemorphic or anamorphic lens. And now this is an all-in-one kit that has the lens and filters together and comes with a case as well. And so this really is an optional item. And I do like how the filters screw on to the lens. It makes it a nice compact setup that feels secure and sturdy. And the quality of the glass is nice too. And I'm using it here with my 14 Pro Max. And now we'll look at a couple test shots using it. So it's 1.55 X, it's super wide. You got the flare, distortion. And you're also getting a little bit of a vignette. So what I did was push in slightly in post-production, but you could also zoom in in camera if you want, and I did that some as well. Or using the 14 Pro Max, you could use the 2X lens with the anamorphic. So overall, I think the lens quality is real solid, and so is the ND. This is all ND32. And I might do a separate review just on this lens and compare it to some other lenses as well. Moment now has a 1.55X. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a comparison between this one and some other brands. What do I like? It's got high quality filters. I really like what Freewell makes and they're robust. The build quality is great. The multifunctional handle is actually a real standout. It can work as a grip, a selfie stick. It can mount onto a tripod as it has a standard arc amount. It can also connect to gimbals and it can work as an iPhone kickstand to watch movies or whatever. The Bluetooth remote is pretty interesting too. It's removable, and so you can take it off and use it as a remote, or you can move it on the actual handle, depending on the type of shooting situation you're in. It's also a very easy to use kit, and so it can work as an everyday carry. You can bring this with you in your backpack, your car, whatever, very easily. And the anamorphic is really a good build quality. The glass is great, and so are the filters. And what do I not like? 
While the handle is strong, the phone doesn't feel super secure when mounted in it. It's fine for casual shooting, but not really very robust for more advanced setups. The anamorphic lens mount is proprietary and kind of tricky to get mounted, especially when you first start using it. It took me a few times. You twist it and then it clicks into place. But even when it's completely mounted, it still feels just a little bit flimsy to me. And I kind of do wish, again, it wasn't proprietary. But the lens and the filters itself of the anamorphic, again, are very nice and high quality. So who is this for? Well, I think it's ideal for casual shooters, everyday carry, travel filmmakers in particular. It's not what I would call a serious filmmaking setup though, like a cage. But again though, their filters are very good and you can get great results with them, but you just can't do much rigging because the payload capacity of the grip is like 350 grams. So again, I think this is ideal for those looking for a portable all-in-one solution that has quality filters and they are really good. So the case grip and variable ND is what I would go with initially. And then if you wanna add other filters or the anamorphic later, you can. But the main kit with a VND is a really great way to get going. And now a word from our sponsor. If you're new to mobile filmmaking, be sure to check out my courses. I've got them on Filmic Pro, LumaFusion. I have a smartphone cinematography course, a smartphone audio course, and now I have a brand new DIY filmmaking course. Learn how to make your own DIY short film with a smartphone. And that can be your first film, or if you're more experienced, your first smartphone film. Check out my website at ifilmmakers.tv for more information. So you might be wondering, should you get the Light Chaser Pro or the new Sherpa? Well, to me, it really just depends on which ecosystem you wanna be in, because they're both proprietary as it comes to filters, and they're both very good. I like Polar Pro and I like Freewell. I tend to use Freewell more because their filters are typically more affordable. That's not the case here. They're very similar in their price and their functionality. But one thing that Polar Pro now has is a cage and it competes with Beast Cage, a little bit lesser than Beast Cage, but also Small Rig. A little more expensive, but they are similar options when you're deciding on what type of kit you wanna rig up. And that is really the main point. It depends on what you're doing and what you're shooting. If you're shooting casual stuff, the Polar Pro Light Chaser case version is great. The Sherpa here is good. It probably is more affordable. And then if you wanna go a little more serious, the Beast Cage is a great one to consider or the Light Chaser Pro, their new cage. And then of course you could do a la carte cages like again, Small Rig or Beast Grip Pro, et cetera. So there's a lot of options out there ultimately, but in the end, the Sherpa is a great kit and especially the basic version again with the case, the grip, and a VND filter. So it's nice to have options and I really do think the Freewell Sherpa is a good one to consider.